two home labbers, two racks, completely different approaches. I'm Evan, and today, John and I are doing a dual home lab rack tour. I'll walk you through my setup first, then John is gonna show off his. Let's get started. This 18U rack is the backbone of everything I do, from running my media server to testing out all the self-hosted projects I cover on this channel. On the left is the picture of my actual rack, and on the right is a diagram I made with Rackula. We covered Rackula in a previous top 10 video, which I will link in the video description below. Starting at the top, I actually need to talk about what's on top of my rack, since I don't have everything mounted yet, as this is a continual work in progress. I have a black and white laser printer for those odd occasions where I actually need to print something out. You also see the tall white box here, which is my Fios router. I'm in the process of going full Unify, but until I get my access point, this Fios router is just being used to push Wi-Fi in my home. In front of it, which is kind of hard to see, is this small white flat box with the cables coming out of it, is my first ever piece of Unify equipment. It's a gateway light that I got on sale this past Black Friday for about 66% off. It's now the router in my network. I absolutely love it, and I plan on building out more Unify networking gear, but more on that in a minute. The first thing you'll see at the very top of my rack is a 10 gig eight port switch. It's a Netgear ProSafe XS708E. It connects my TrueNAS, my Proxmox, and my desktop workstation from my office. Once you go to 10 gig, you genuinely cannot go back. Just below that is my main 48 port gigabit switch. It's a Netgear ProSafe GS748T. This handles all the general network traffic, management interfaces, IoT devices, anything that doesn't require high bandwidth needs. As you can see from it, there's not a lot of ethernet cable in my home. So the future plan is to replace both of these with smaller Unify units. Next is a piece of equipment I use for work. This black bar right here is a Digi AW24G300. It allows me to connect a USB device to a remote computer like a VPS instance. This is the server where the USB devices physically attach. The remote VPS will run a software client which makes the device look like it's attached directly to the machine. The drawer right below it is where I keep all the USB devices. This is all work related and I can't really talk about it, but I will tell you this drawer makes my setup so much cleaner. Before this, I had all this USB cabling going all over the place, and now all the USB devices just sit in this drawer, and it mostly closes all the way. Below the drawer is my Proxmox virtualization server. This is used for LXE containers, VMs, and testing I don't want to do on my production TrueNAS server. It's a hand-built 2U chassis with all desktop components, Below my Proxmox is my TrueNAS server. If you watch this channel for any length of time, you know I'm a huge TrueNAS fan. This thing handles all of my bulk storage, my media libraries, backups, and runs all of my Docker containers. The case is a 4U Roswell RSV L4412. At the very bottom is an APC Smart UPS. In the event of a power event, Everything I've just covered is running through this uninterruptible power supply, so I don't have any hard restart issues. If you're building a home lab with any data you care about, a UPS is an optional, absolutely mandatory. As you can see, I probably need to dust mine a little bit more, but it is an absolute tank and it's been running strong for years. So that's my rack, but mine is only half the story. John's setup takes a completely different approach. John, take it away. It takes a completely different approach. John, take it away. Oh. You're wanting, oh my god, don't show them this, it's not ready, oh, uh, let me switch. This is John from the very long future. I didn't realize we never said who I was, and a lot of you might not know who I am. I'm John, the editor over at Servers at Home. I've hosted a few videos, and I'm on the live streams that we do every Friday. So, uh, there's uh, my, uh, uh, so there's my explanation of who I am, well, let's continue. Yes, you are looking at a fish tank. Don't judge me. This is my special fish game. So, to be honest with you, I do have to level with you. I do have a very overkill system, but that's not really the thing I need to level on you with. The issue is that I am moving soon, and so I might have let my home lab go a bit. It's... Basically the equivalent of coming home from a long day of work and unlocking your bell, you know, you know what I mean? Without delaying it anymore, here is my setup. Okay, I'm gonna delay a little more. This is obviously not my main home lab, just my networking gear. I actually do have two racks. My main home lab did used to be really different. 
And as I'm writing this script, I'm actually realizing I never took a picture of what that main home lab looked. So I guess here is what it looked like when I was disassembling it for when I upgraded to my HL15. It used to be a Fractal Design XL, and this is where I would store all of my main drives. I've always been a data hoarder when I started with five 20 terabyte drives. But we'll get into that when I get down to the main section of the rack. What I currently have now is a 45 Home Lab HL15. That is why I do have two separate racks. Let's start from the top. What I have is a SFP Unify switch that was given to me. I don't use it. It's pretty redundant. It's not something that I need, but I figured I might as well just store it there. And if I ever need it, then I can use it. Under that is my Dream Machine Special Edition that I've been using for a few years now and it has been working fine, except in a few cases, I've had issues where it was giving me slower speeds. I have two gig symmetrical fiber and it'll sometimes only give me 200 megs. I've tested this thoroughly. I tested it with multiple different routers, the router that was included by my ISP in another router I bought from Best Buy, in another one I got from Micro Center, and they've all been different. And all three of those routers were giving me my intended speeds, but not my Unify one. They want me to do a few more tests. It happens every now and then. The only solution I've found so far is factory resetting the device. It's been pretty annoying to deal with, but besides that, it's been working fine. Every time I factory reset it, I have a backup that I can run that's been working fine. And then under that is my Enterprise 48 PoE switch. I got this on a massive deal on eBay. That's why it's here, even though it's extremely overkill for what I need. When I do move, I do plan to utilize those 48 ports more. You'll also notice that plastic clear box that's in the back, that's actually my Home Assistant Yellow. I got that from Nabucasa. The other two devices on the right-hand side that is a old Eufy storage device I had, and I got rid of the Eufy device because it sucked, honestly. The other one is a old Philips Hue bridge. I got rid of that because Philips Hue sucks. All the tape that you see around is how I'm naming my cables to figure out where they go. I've since gotten different tags for naming my cables. I just haven't used them yet because I'm moving soon. Without any further delays, here is the uncleanly monstrosity that I have right now. Don't judge, it is very messy right now in this closet. Starting at the top of my rack is a USP PDU Pro. It's basically just a surge protector that's rack mounted from Ubiquiti. It monitors my power and I can power cycle things through it. Under that, I have a brush panel that I filter wires through that I plan to make look better in the future. And then under that is actually a Jet KVM. I was a backer from Kickstarter with Jet KVM, and I've loved the product so far. It's been really great, just at $69, nice. I plan on getting more eventually when they come to the market. Next under that is my main server on a shelf. It's turned backwards because I had a fun-filled year with my server. For 2025, my server wanted to have the equivalent of a stroke. It was having power cycling issues that was happening really randomly, and I couldn't really give a rhyme or a reason to it. I was wanting to watch Plex with my brother one day, and it powered off, and so I told him that I need to go up to go turn it back on, but I couldn't turn it back on. This led to us going to Micro Center, which was an hour drive, which he did not want to do, but bless my brother for coming with me because I did not want to drive there an hour by myself and an hour back. So I got RAM and a new motherboard just in case. The motherboard that I have is not a small one. It's an ASUS ProR X870E. That is an expensive motherboard. I brought it back home and I brought my huge HL15 out of the rack and I was disassembling it and I put everything back 
back together and I couldn't get it to power up. That led to me messing with my main system to take out its motherboard to try to test it out because I did not want to drive another hour. I could not figure out what the issue was besides possibly the power supply. I went back to Micro Center. So that's another two hours spent at Micro Center. I got a new power supply. I came back and it was not working still. So what I did was I disassembled the whole server without the backplane for the drives and it worked. The backplane is what was causing the issues. So I contacted 45 Home Lab, which is a sister company of 45 drives. And they sent over a new backplane and new backplane power cables. And that worked. You might say, John, that doesn't sound too bad. Two chips to Micro Center and you had to call support and wait a week so your server was off for only a week. That's not bad. Well, you'd be wrong. I then identified a network issue. I could not connect to my server over the network at all, no matter what I did. That then led to me replacing that motherboard with the exact same motherboard, and I brought that home and I tested it out and didn't work. By the way, that was another Micro Center trip. I then proceeded to go back to Micro Center for a third time. I got the exact same motherboard and I got a 10 gig NIC. I then came home and neither of those worked. I then asked my brother if he could go to Best Buy for me to get a different motherboard entirely from MSI. He brought that to me. The 10 gig NIC still didn't work, but the network on that MSI board did work. I went ahead and I returned everything back to Micro Center and we found out that there was a bad batch of motherboards from Micro Center. So I went ahead and I got the exact same motherboard from Amazon and that caused everything to work. Overall, this process took about two and a half weeks due to me being busy at this time and not wanting to drive multiple hours away. I was emotionally defeated at this time because this is my profession and I was telling myself that there's literally no possibility that I got three bad motherboards in a row and there was just something that I was doing wrong. Before I start this, I want to state my wife and I have a very healthy, loving relationship and sometimes we make jokes at each other and that's okay. My wife, while she was in her office and I was working on the server in my office, she had made a joke while I was on the brink of crying because of the amount of stress I was under and I asked her not right now. And she respectfully did it and she made sure that I was okay and that everything was going okay throughout the whole process. But now to this day, she makes fun of me for almost crying over my server. I also want to say thank you for the wonderful team at 45 Home Lab. They were very quick to respond. Once I stated that there was an issue on the email, they gave me a phone call. They didn't ask for anything. They asked if you tried this, this, and this, and I let them know that I did. They, no questions asked, sent me the new board and cables, and they also sent a follow-up email after a month of asking if it was still working. I also want to thank the members at my local micro center. I actually have a friend that works there, so everyone already knew me by a first name basis, but by the end of it, everyone was pretty understandably done with seeing me in there. All of the affected motherboards were replacements, so I didn't have to buy these individuals. After discovering that the batch was bad, they not only took the refund, but they also gave me in-store credit, which they obviously didn't have to do. I also want to thank my brother, who is not tech savvy at all, but was still willing to discuss troubleshooting with me. We did discuss this on the live streams that we do every Friday, so I want to give a special thank you to all the haters who DM'd me saying that this was an issue that I was causing and that there was no possible way that this was done naturally. To this day, the server has been running perfectly fine and I make sure to bow to it out of respect when I leave my office. For the actual specs of my server, I'll go ahead and leave those up on screen for the remainder. The rest of my rack is nothing to really write home about. I have a JBOD under my server from Supermicro, which I got from a good deal on eBay. And then under the JBOD is an APC UPS that I got as a Facebook marketplace deal. 
Evan didn't record an outro for this video, so I guess I'm going to be doing the outro. All of our stuff that we did discuss today will be linked in the video description below. All of those links that are Amazon links are affiliate links, so if you'd like to support us, we greatly appreciate it. For next week's video, we'll go ahead and we'll be releasing a video over the applications and our networking that we have for our homes. If you enjoyed the collab between myself and Evan, go ahead and let us know in the comments below or leave us a like on the video. If you find yourself coming by often and enjoying our content, go ahead and subscribe. If you'd also like to support us, you can join our Patreon linked in the description below to watch content that YouTube doesn't allow us to post here. Thank you all for watching and as always, stay curious.